Officer Jackson was walking in his usual area when a sad little girl who didn't have parents came up to him on a dark street corner. She looked at him with watery eyes and quietly said three words that really scared him. Those words showed that something bad was happening and Officer Jackson knew he had to do something fast. This was a new situation for Officer Jackson. He had been a police officer for about three years and was just doing his regular patrol that morning. His colleague, Officer Maroy, was waiting in the car and saw everything that happened. She came over to Jackson and the little girl, saying she checked the area to find out where the girl came from. Maybe her parents were nearby and the girl was lost. During this time, Officer Jackson stayed with the girl. He could see that she trusted him and he didn't want to break that trust. He walked her to the police car and sat with her in the back. Officer Jackson took a picture of the girl and shared it with all the other officers. They began going door to door, asking people if they recognized her or had ever seen her before. In the end, their efforts didn't go to waste. One older woman who was willing to open the door for them did recognize the girl. That girl? There she is, an orphan, no mother, no father, she said when Officer Maroy pressed her for more information. The older woman quickly seemed to realize what she had just said and told the officers that she did not know anything else. The longer Maroy tried to talk to her, the more stressed she seemed to become until she slammed the door in her face. Officer Maroy knew that if she wanted to get more information out of this woman, she would either have to arrest her or get a search warrant to go through the house. For now, their search had come to an end, and even though they had some information, they still had no idea where this girl came from because even if the old woman was right and she was, in fact, an orphan, then where had she been all this time? She had to have been living somewhere. If she lived on the street, she would have been noticed a while ago. Who had taken care of her? Officer Maroy reported back to Jackson, who was still waiting with the young girl in the back seat of the police car. The next step was to take her to the police station and work it out from there. On the ride back to the police station, the two officers discussed what would be their best course of action. Of course, they would need to put out a citywide message that they had found this girl and that her caretaker needed to report to the station immediately. But what if that did not work? Would they just have to hand her over to foster care? After their car ride back, Officer Jackson and Maroy quickly set into motion a citywide alert, releasing the orphan girl's picture across various platforms. As the image circulated throughout the city, calls began flooding the police station, each one a potential lead that could unravel the mystery of the girl's identity yet many seemed to lead only into deeper confusion. In a turn that piqued both their interest and skepticism, an anonymous tip redirected Officer Jackson and Maroy toward a wealthy neighborhood, its manicured lawns and sprawling estates a vivid contrast to the dimly lit streets where they had found the girl. They couldn't help but wonder what connection, if any, this polished world could have to the orphan's mysterious story. In this opulent setting, the residents they encountered were polite, yet there was an unmistakable air of skepticism in their responses. Could such a girl truly be unknown in a community where everyone seemed to know everything about their neighbors? Back at the station, Jackson and Maroy pored over maps and records, searching for any possible link between the girl and the wealthy neighborhood. This lack of connection only deepened the mystery surrounding her. While driving through the wealthy neighborhood once more, a sudden sharp intake of breath from the girl caught the officer's attention as they passed a particularly grand mansion. Her eyes widened and her small hands clenched into fists. This unexpected reaction stirred a keen interest in Jackson and Maroy. Was there a hidden connection between the girl and this opulent residence? Deciding to follow this lead, they approached the mansion and were met by its owner, a figure known for his prominence in the community. He greeted them with a polished veneer of concern, but when shown the girl's picture, he quickly denied any knowledge of her. As the conversation with the mansion owner continued, Jackson and Maroy couldn't shake off a nagging suspicion. Using the pretext of a routine inquiry, the officers asked to take a look around the mansion. As they walked through its opulent halls, they kept a watchful eye on the girl, who remained silent yet visibly tense. Every glance she cast around the mansion seemed to carry a story yet to be told. Leaving the mansion with more questions than answers, Jackson and Maroy felt a deepening sense of uncertainty. The owner's polished denial and the girl's silent telltale reactions created a puzzle that refused to fit together neatly. Back at their desks, Jackson and Maroy began to peel back the layers of the mansion owner's life, 
coming through financial records and past interactions. Among the mansion owner's financial records were transactions that raised eyebrows, large sums of money moving in unusual patterns and connections to shadowy figures in the city's social light. These dealings painted a picture of someone who played at the edges of legality, a debt that stained just within the lines. Despite their efforts, they couldn't find direct proof linking the mansion owner to the girl. Jackson and Maroy tried a new plan. They secretly watched the mansion and its owner, hoping to discover something they hadn't seen in the documents. With determination and caution, Jackson and Maroy went back to the mansion. Inside, they asked the owner tough questions, and his calm exterior started to crack. He went from sounding confident to being defensive. During this intense conversation, the girl, who had been quiet, suddenly looked very upset. In an unexpected moment, she spoke up, saying, there are others. Her words were soft, but carried a heavy message of hidden horrors. This revelation, simple yet chilling, hung in the room like a specter that instantly shifted the narrative of the investigation. With a mixture of shock and determination, they detained the mansion owner, his earlier composure now replaced by a look of disbelief. As they escorted him from his opulent surroundings, the officers knew they were stepping into a potentially deep and troubling part of the investigation. Recognizing the gravity of the girl's statement, a comprehensive search of the property was quickly organized. Jackson and Maroy called in additional officers, briefing them with an urgency that underscored the potential seriousness of what they might uncover. The mansion, once a symbol of wealth and status, was now the focus of grim and intense scrutiny. In a secluded wing of the mansion, their methodical search led them to an unassuming door skillfully hidden within the intricate designs of the wall. The discovery of this hidden area sent a ripple of apprehension through the team. As the hidden door swung open, a grim scene unfolded before the officer's eyes. Each confined space revealed another child, each appearing just as bewildered and neglected as the first girl they had found. The discovery of these children hidden away in such deplorable conditions sent waves of shock and anger through the team. It became chillingly clear that she, along with the other children, had been used as mere sources of income, a despicable exploitation hidden beneath a veneer of wealth and respectability. The reality became clear as we examined documents and heard from the rescued children. The mansion owner had exploited these vulnerable kids for money. He was arrested on multiple severe charges, including child exploitation and neglect. The local community reacted with shock, anger, and sympathy as news of the case spread. Now, the focus is on finding the children new loving homes. Child welfare agencies, with community support, are working tirelessly to identify foster and adoptive families, ensuring the kids get a safe and caring environment. If you like this story, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your loved ones. Also subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss the update from our channel. Thank you.